Hello and good evening. Um, today we are starting a, a new story from Sipur and Isaias. And the story is of the master of prayer. This is um, the the 12th story from the 13th, the, the, uh, the last story, which is the story of the seven beggars, is the only one that is even more, that is longer, even more complex, and basically is the pinnacle of Sipurimaisis. But this, this particular story is deals with Tikkun Olam, it deals with uh, the creation of the world, the way the world was, the, the shattering of the vessel, um, Mashiach, the uh, confusion that uh, has basically befallen the world. And uh, what is the Tikkun? So without Hashem, there is a, you know, Hashem, a long and fascinating journey in this truly miraculous story. So let's just uh, let's just find where the story is here. Um, Okay, here we go. So they chose to call this uh, the prayer leader. This is a tale. And it starts with the words, a tale, a mason. That in itself bears learning. Once there was a prayer leader, literally about Philo, is the master of prayer, or the prayer man, uh, the owner of prayer, the husband of prayer. Also denoting a person in Appointed to lead a prayer service. That's why it's called the prayer leader. And Rabbeinu says, who was always involved only with prayers and songs and praises to Hashem's birth. Um, and he dwelled outside of settled areas. And his schedule was he would regularly go into subtle areas he would enter in a conversation with some person and typically he would converse with the lowly people which is poor people so forth and he would begin to talk with the people you know heart to heart regarding the purpose of the whole world now there was a purpose of life and in truth, there is no purpose at all in the world aside from serving Hashem all the days of one's life. And one should spend the years only with prayer to Hashem is Baruch, and with songs and prayers to Hashem is Baruch. And will speak very much with the people such words of awakening until his words would enter into someone's heart until that person would be willing to join him and as soon as the person agreed with him he would immediately take him and bring him to his place which was outside the settled area obviously this little beginning has in it uh everything um, 
it starts with the words, a tale. You know, when, uh, when Rabbeinu speaks about um, the fact that by Hashem is Baruch, there could always be two conflicting, two contradictions in, in one subject that would both be true. Um, and we give a, um, an example that to such a contradiction, which is what is the uh, what is the isness of this world? Is this world uh, a reality? A mamas? Or this word, this world is just an illusion, a hologram. That there's nothing about Akadosh Baruch Hu alone. The answer is that both versions are true. The world's physical existence is absolute. At the same time, the fact that there is no world, there's only a Kaddish Baruch Hu alone, is also absolute, and they're both truths, both in the same manner. This is the first words that the Rebbe starts in this story of Baal Tfila, a Maisel. This world is a Maisel. A Maisel is, is it something that actually happened? Or is it an allegory? Is it a, 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 a reporting about reality? Or this is something that is made up in order to get out of reality? And the Rebbe starts with the pinnacle of creation, which is the Baal Tefillah. The Baal Tefillah obviously represents Mashiach. And Besides just representing Mashiach, he says that he says he spent all his days praying and singing praises to Hashem is Baruch. And he lived outside of town. These are the two things that the two things that Rabbi starts when he speaks about the Baal Tefillah. We see it. You know, in 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 this this this, this last week's parsha, that was a completely full chuck of seeing. Vayera Hashem al Avram, and Avram sees three malachim, and Hagar. Then she goes out. You know, then 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 uh, um, when 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 uh, Sarah Menu gives. You know, gives birth, and she sees she sees Ishmael, you know, um, being abusive to Yitzchok, and she tells Avraham to send her away, and Avraham Avinu sends her away, and she sees uh, she's dying of thirst, and the Malach shows her a well, and she he opens up her eyes, and she sees a well, and she's able to water, you know, to give water to Ishmael. And then we see Avram Avinu is going, you know, to to sacrifice Yitzchak. This is again full with seeing. They're walking, and then they're seeing the mountain from afar. He's going for three days. Then Yitzchak is saying, uh, he's he's calling Avram, and he says to him. Uh, you know, Tati, and he says, yes, my son. He says, here is the fire. Now, here are the woods, and here are the fire, but where 
is the Sela Oila, where is the sheep for sacrifice? And Avram Avinu says, Elokim Yirela Hashem Oila, Kodesh Baruch will see which, which Sela Oila, which, 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 which carbon, you know, will be, will be, you know, Kodesh Baruch will see it. And this this whole thing with 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 Avram Avinu and 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 Yishmoel, I'm sorry, and 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 Lloyd, and the whole thing is what we're basically seeing here is the contradiction between the way that the human being sees the world and the way Hakadosh Baruch Hu sees the world when. When 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 we're we're taking a look at at, at Lloyd and you know he's being Ramavino Kivyahul, you know, prays for Sdom and it doesn't work. It is it seems like it doesn't work. Kadishbah who says, Will I cover up from Ramavinu that which I'm doing? You know, he's gonna be, you know, it's a show is gonna to belong to him. So he tells him, this is a story with Sdom. So Ramavinu spends a long time praying and supplicating and begging for Sdom. At the end, as we know, Sdom is being utterly destroyed. The point until today, it is totally, you know, it's a desert. It's a salt desert. It seems like the way that we see, the way that we judge things is that if it works, the way that we see it, that means that it was successful. But if it doesn't work, then ah, this filler wasn't successful, it wasn't this, and it's not so. Obviously, Akadosh Baruch Hu knew in advance that Avraham Avinu's filler will not make a difference. Nevertheless, he wants Avraham Avinu to die. So when you look at it from a human perspective, a human look, a ear of a boss of a dumb, the tefillah didn't work. But we see that it's not so. Lloyd was taken out, was rescued from stone. And it is through, you know, the, the trials and tribulations of, of Lot and his daughters, the two nations, you know, were created, and from this Mashiach will come. This whole thing is crystallized by a single sentence of a Ramavina. Because the question is, what is was the what was the Nisan of a Ramavina? To 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 give his son to Kadish Baruch? Hu? He'll give everything to Kadish Baruch. Hu. To the point that for Yitzchak Avinu, we say it was an Israel for Avram, but it wasn't an Israel for Yitzchak. Why? Because Yitzchak grew in the house, house of Avram Avinu. What do you mean? Because <laughs> Baruch Hu says, you know, to, to be sacrificed by Vakasai, no problem. Says, by Avram Avinu, the Israel was, Kaddish Baruch Hu told him, Yitzchak bin Chaykor el Chazara. Yitzchak el Chazara, he is, your offspring are going to come out of Yitzchak Avinu. And then he says, go sacrifice him. The three days, the three days of the journey to, to the, the Hara Maria, the Atzlocha of the Amido, of the Nisayan of Avram Avinu was the fact that Avram Avinu had one thought in mind. There was no contradiction in the mind of, of Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu knew, Kaddish Baruch Hu said, Yitzchak bin Chaykel Chazor. On the other hand, Avram Avinu knew that Hashem said, Aleo so, so what So what's the answer? This kind of hemming and hawing is the thing that gets all stuck. Mitzad Echad, I'm supposed to be this. Mitzad Echad, I'm so far from where I'm supposed to be that it's not even funny. The answer is Christopher with one sentence. Elokim yire loy hasel oilo. I am not looking at things from my point of view. It's not what I consider success. 
than is successful. It's not what I consider to make sense or not to make sense that is successful. It's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu says. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Elokim Yireh Lase Lo'ilo. Whatever it is HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to do. This world, the Maisa of Baal Tefillah is, is, is fraught with this kind of dilemma between this very straight Ashkafa of, of the Baal Tefillah and the Baal Tefillah, what does he say? What is the tachlis of the world that he says? Is to spend one's life praising and singing to Kaddish Baruch Hu. Just a second. What about uh, asking Kaddish Baruch Hu, Shalaf Tzrocha, what is, what is, what is, what is, is it? Chopped liver? What about uh, uh, mishpat, mishpat satsmi, you know, I'm this. The tachlis is praising the Kodesh Baruch Hu. In other words, to, ha- to be so focused on what the Iker is. The Iker is to see everything from a Kodesh Baruch Hu's point of view. I don't see a Kodesh Baruch Hu's point of view, but I believe in it and I trust it completely. Ad kach that the target of my life is to sing to Kodesh Baruch Hu and to praise him. Praise him for what? I don't see anything. This is the target because this is the truth. Everything that Kodesh Baruch Hu does is good. It's not always tasty. It's not always pleasant. It can be painful. But it is always good because within the pain itself, as Rabbeinu says in Torah Samechei, within the Pain itself, in the Yisurim themselves, are this is where the fruit comes out. In Teres HaMacher, Rabbeinu speaks about uh, the the Baal uh, the, the the one who runs the field, tends the field, the field where the Neshamas grow. And ultimately, is he supposed to make one from the tight field? He's supposed to go to all the way up above creation to Ainsof where everything is good, everything is one. And then when you come back, what you get is greater Yisurim. But these greater Yisurim bring a, forth a fruit, a schachos b'tera, a new terror. Basically, what the, if you were to sum up Tera Samechei in one sentence, is the fruit of the, the, the plants that are growing in the field is to see things from the point of view of kula echad kula tov. Because as you go along with your life and you change and you stick to the tzaddik, and you stick to the tzaddikim, and you learn the Torahs, what you do is you are creating, uh, um, I would say, uh, um, uh, a directional corrections in your point of view. From what's the most fun, most pre- pre- pleasurable, what's uh, advantageous to me, to what is the thing that leads to the tachlis of kula echad kulatov. The answer is tefillah. In Achinami, you cannot get there without tear. But, but even tear, you cannot really learn without tefillah. Yeah, you can learn tear. You can be busy with tear. You can find out, you learn what the Allah is and so on and so on. But ultimately, you cannot ascertain what the Aloha truly is without tefillah. Tefillah is the entryway to everything, to living life right and in, 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 in pointing towards the right direction. What it is that I'm supposed to achieve in this world is to change the way I look at things. So to the point of 
Look, I have my obligations in life. I'm supposed to pay my bills. I'm supposed to rear my children. I'm supposed to help other people. There are a lot of things that I need to do, but gosh, yes, 100%. The world is real. On the same time, the idea is that I'm supposed to look at this world from the point of view of, it was as the Baltrilla calls it, outside the issue. Living in town, in the issue, means, you know, you go, you talk about the elections, who is going to get what, or what minister is going to be, who is going to be what, and whatever it is, and who won America, the Democrats or the Republicans, and if Trump is this or Trump is that, what? what and who's going to win uh, this championship or that game or whatever. And there is a point of view of outside the issue. Outside the issue means all these things are created to distract me. From what? From seeing from things from the point of view of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, to trust a Kodesh Baruch Hu's way of seeing things. And he speaks here on what is the job of Mashiach? What is his goal? His goal is to go ahead and then carve every single Jew to this union of tefillah. When you, the closer you are to the concept of tefillah, to the practice of tefillah, the closer you get to seeing things from a perspective of what leads me to my goal, what gets me away from my goal. This is the reason why the hardest thing to do in Abed Hashem is tefillah. Because tefillah, and now the thing is that there is also tefillah from the Yishuv, and there's a tefillah of outside the Yishuv. You see with the Baal tefillah, he goes into town, and he speaks to some poor people, and he convinces them that the only thing to do is to praise Hashem. And when they're convinced, what does he do? He takes them out. Why do you leave him in? Leave him in town. Let him dive in town. Why take him out? Because there is two types of tefillah. There is a tefillah that is here in this oil, which is very important. It's a great thing. I need parnasa. I need health. I need, you know, my children to get shiduchim. I get my children that, you know, to get health and 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 to to rear their children, you know, the way the mechad chas namachem their children and so forth. And I need the kodesh baruch hu, the source of the tzaddik, you know, to to turn over, you know, the the mistakes that I did in my life. Some of them are 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 profound, and I have absolutely no way of fixing them. To turn it over, and from, you know, from 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 uh, the, from the bitterness, you know, a, a, a sweet fruit should grow, uh, and everything should be achieved through tefillah. But this is still considered tefillah of of the yishuv. You're in town. You need money. You need this. You need that. Most of the oilum don't even know that they need to daven for it. Maybe they'll. You know, they pay a lip service. The further they are from the Baal Tfilah, the further they are from the Tzadik Emes, the further they are from the from the the the, the instinctive uh, and natural comprehension. I'm lacking something. I'm supposed to dump for it. I mean, it's the most obvious thing in the world. I need this after dump for it. I need this after dump for it. Will I get it if I dive for it? Well, chances are, you know, as as when when the Kodesh Baruch Hu is an all merciful father. All merciful father means as follows: means that whenever your child comes and asks you for something, if you are well adjusted, functional father, 
and a kind man who loves his children is not too busy with his own, with assuaging his own pain, running away from reality. The answer when the children ask for anything, the default answer is yes. Of course you can have it, unless there's a reason for the benefit of the child why the answer should be either no or not yet. The default answer is yes. And Lamaisa, even to the Tfilos inside the Yishu, I would say 95 to 98% of the things that you need. The reason why you lack them is because the Kodesh Baruch is not enough in the picture. And the lack is there to call your attention to that. The minute you dive in for it, you realize, A, the Kodesh Baruch Hu is behind this lack. And that's something which I need to go through. This is my, my toiva. This is the toivosi. This is for my benefit. And secondly, the, once I realize, once I, br once I bring the Kodesh Baruch Hu into the, into the, the reality, there's no longer reason for the choyser. There's no reason, no no longer a reason for the lack. So you get what you get, unless there's a reason why you either shouldn't get it or you shouldn't get it yet. Again, crystallized in the point of view of what Rabbi Meir says to Yitzchak. Hashem will see whether I'm supposed to get it, you're supposed to get it, you know, the 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 the, the Kodesh Baruch is, whatever it is the Kodesh Baruch is going to do, Kodesh Baruch knows what he's doing. I'm trusting a Kodesh Baruch Hu's point of view. What a Kodesh Baruch Hu sees, I trust that. So what do I do in the meantime? I have I have some serious needs. You know, they need to be met. So I ask. I ask for them. And until then, I wait. The difference between getting something out of Ishtadlus without Philo and getting something with Ishtadlus with Philo is that getting something with the shtadlus without filler comes quicker. No? Excuse me. <laughs> How fair is that? The answer is that when you ask for something, that means that what you're going to get is not just the thing itself. The minute you get what you're asking for, you're going to get a muna. The thing that you're going to get is already sanctified because it's a result of tefillah. Ah, you want that much? Okay. For this, you have to pass a test. The test is not yet. Everything will come in due time. You think that you can do it, that the shtaglis does it, whatever, no problem. It's just gashmis. That's always, of course, here. You have to do it honestly, whatever, the whole thing. But the Shtadlis is going about Simyogi. There is this, this Ashkofa that it's, I'm in control, is always in the background. For such a small thing, such a cheap small thing, no problem. You can get it right away. Because Rafa tells you, you know, and you dafka, 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 dafka. Okay, so you get it. You'll pay the price afterwards. It, this is true even with filler. You can be so action dick with filler, you're going to get it, Rabbi Eno says, even when it's not good for you. Always let the Kodesh Baruch give the last, you know, the last word, give to Kodesh Baruch. 
So what am I supposed to do in the meantime? I need Pernasa. I need this. My children need Shidduchim. I need whatever it is, you know, whatever the laundry list of my needs is. The answer is, you ask for what you want, and you thank, and you sing, and you praise the Kaddish Baruch in the meantime. Because what he's doing with you when he gives you, when he doesn't give you, when he is, is beyond measure. It's glory of glory is what he's doing with you. In this world, it's beyond imagining. The tough kit of the Baal Tfilo is to create an indelible connection between you and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Sometimes the difficulties in the tefillah are because of, you know, simple lack of amuna, and the lack of amuna can come from, you know, what what they call living in town, with the opinions of everybody. You know, the funniest thing in election nights is you have a whole panel of quote unquote experts sitting and analyzing what the results are going to be. Wait until the morning, you'll find out what the results are. No, but I'm an expert. And I'm, I'm, the thing is, it's not just people that are, that all they have is al -Mazin. I'm talking about even, even people, you know, who are not B'nai Torah, but you know, the, you know, people that are Boch Hashem, Shem Shabbos, Shemai, whatever it is, they're also getting caught up in this dimion. That's why the Baal Tfil takes them outside of the Yishu. You can live in town and be outside of the Yishu. You know, I think I told you the story once before. Uh, I, I, uh, I had some some uh, some problems. I still have some problems with with anxiety, so my doctor sent me to a psychiatrist. So I went to a psychiatrist. It wasn't long ago. I went to a psychiatrist, and he asked me, he asked me, "Do you think about death? About dying?" So I told him every day. person my age, of course. So he wrote down that I am, I'm, I suffer from depression because I'm uh, and he looked at me as something, something is something is wrong with it. I told the story to Murray Verabi Simchabalev and he bursts out laughing about the doctor. He says, as a Meshuga, what a nut. A person tells him, yeah, I'm thinking about death in an oil of my boat every single day. And he says, you're crazy. You know, that's what he considers in the issue of life to be is be totally oblivious of the fact that, you know, that, that life will come to an end. And then just boom, bada bim, bada boom, you're gone. <laughs> That's it, nothing to worry anymore. He says, this is, this is the epitome, this is the definition of being crazy. And he looks at me and he says, listen, this <laughs> some <laughs> you're, uh, you're depressed. You're thinking about death every single day. You wake up in the morning, uh, you know, I believe these are them above. Not just Soyle Mazay. This is, this is the job of the Balt Filler to come into our lives and say, listen, not only are you supposed to pray the Philos of in the Yishu, you ultimately need to get to the Philos of outside the Yishu. Which is Shevach Voidur, seeing everything from the point of view of a Kaddish Baruch. 
I don't know what it is. I'm giving him the credit. I'm thanking him and praising him until I will I'll see the issue of my own eyes. And but I will see it. And if not, then this is my issue. If I don't see it yet, so it's not yet. Everything, everything that happens to me, because Baruch Hu does. And everything that he does, he does it because he loves me. He does it for my benefit. And because Baruch Hu can do anything. Because Baruch Hu can bestow upon me everything that I think that I'm lacking. No problem whatsoever. So if he's behind anything, he does everything. He can do everything. He wants to give me everything. Yet I, I lack all these things. What does it mean? <laughs> That's the best thing for me. It's possible. So what I'm supposed to do? Praise the Kaddish Baruch Hu. Baruch Hashem. It doesn't mean I shouldn't ask. You know, but I have this lack so I can ask for it. But in the meantime, sing and praise the Kaddish Baruch Hu for the fact that I'm lacking it. Because when I ask the Kaddish Baruch Hu for it, you know, what a, a, an incredible, incredible privilege it is to look up and know that you're dependent. Only Kaddish Baruch Hu can save you. Ah, what a schus. Nobody can help except a Kaddish Baruch Hu alone. Just think about it. Just think about it. To be able to look up. I mean, how many times do people go to when things go wrong? It's never going to work out. You lift up your own eyes and say, Kaddish Baruch Hu. Only a Kaddish Baruch Hu. What is chos? What is chos? Life is good. Life is good. Okay, my friends, Bezat Hashem, this was the first installment of my thing about Philo. Bezat Hashem, uh, A, we will meet Hashem, God willing, continue this next week. And we'll start getting into Brisailom, Shviyasakalim, and whatever it is that, that came, that comes with it. And in Yitz Hashem Wednesday, we're continuing here in Zoom in, you know, with Lakut Maran. So, Bezat Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu should, in the meantime, send us Mishiach Tzidkenu, build us a Mekdish Merabi Ameinu, and give us Yeshua Shem, Merabi Ameinu, Amen. Bezat Hashem.